Alright, just gonna do a video refuting Tommy McMurtry's crazy video debunking dispensationalism and just you're gonna see how he's just perverting scripture and making a complete mess of the Bible. It's crazy. Let's get right into it. Thing I want to cover in this video is the issue of multiple gospels. Now, while many dispensationalists do not believe in multiple gospels, okay, I'm gonna point this out. If you don't believe in multiple gospels, you're not a dispensationalist. Just, I'm gonna show you some scripture proving that. But if you're a dispensationalist, part of dispensationalism is there are different plans of salvation. Again, again, I'm going to prove it from the scriptures. And if you're one of Tommy McMurtry's followers, prove me wrong from the scriptures alone. Don't do this thing of 1830, John Nelson Darby, 1830, John Nelson Darby. Okay, let me show you something interesting. Uh, Google dispensationalism on Google. Go to Wikipedia. Go to the section on history. The concept of the arranging of biblical or of divisions of biblical history dates back to the to Irenaeus and during the second century. Uh, Yes, there was dispensational theology before 1830. There were early Christians talking about different dispensations and, and doing dispensational types of things. Dispensational types of theology, theological types of things. So don't believe this lie of, oh, it's 1830, 1830, 1830. Second century. Long before 1830. But let's get right into it. This is a foundational teaching of dispensationalism. In fact, if you look in Clarence Larkin's book, Dispensational Truth, you will see that he teaches multiple Gospels. He has four in there, and he's not referring to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. He teaches four different Gospels, while most dispensationalists today teach three. Either way, if you have any more than one, you are dead wrong. That is a very wicked teaching. And the it, teaching of multiple Gospels, it is one of the most disgusting teachings in dispensationalism. And what I want to do, I want to debunk the whole idea of multiple Gospels. But at the same time, at the end of this, I want to show why dispensationalists must teach multiple Gospels. And so Galatians 1, 6, this is a verse we always go to. It says, And I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another Gospel which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. And as we... So, I'll do this. I'll take Galatians 1. And, and by the way, I'm going to show you who it's written to, by the way. But he'll take Galatians 1 and say, see, if you preach any other gospel, any other gospel, you're accursed. Okay, let me show you something interesting. Here's something that uh, Tom and McMurtry won't show you, and the new IFB won't show you. Galatians chapter 1, verse number 1. Paul, an apostle, not of men, men, neither by men, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead. Verse 2. And all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia. So, Galatians chapter 1 is to the believers. It's to the church of Galatians. Believers is written to. And you go, uh, verse number 9, As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you, sorry, just highlight that, you, I kind of highlight that, there we go, you, so it's talking unto you, saved believers, that, that which we, which ye have received, let him be accursed. It's talking to saved believers here. It's not talking to lost people. And in the context, it's in the Pauline epistles. And I'm going to show you how he just makes a complete mess, and he just does these just crazy mess acrobatics. He'll say that, you know, that salvation is by the death, burial, and resurrection, even in the Old Testament. I mean, it's nutty nonsense. Said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you that ye have received, let him be accursed. So right there, it's very clear. There is not another gospel. There are only per Again, who is it written to? It's talking to believers, you know. Unto you, you know, save save Christians. It's crazy. Perverters of the gospel. And dispensationalists, they pervert the very gospel of God. Oh, wow. And that is why it's such a dangerous teaching. This is why I will not have anything to do with anyone who teaches multiple gospels. I will do like the Bible says, and I will let them be accursed. As far as I'm concerned, they're on their way to hell, and I'm not going to do anything to stop it. I believe. Oh, wow, they're on their way to hell. Okay, let me show you something. Because people who teach another gospel are on their way to hell. Okay, James 2.24. 
you see then that how see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Uh oh, by works and not by faith only. How does that line up with Ephesians two eight and nine? For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So I guess was the Apostle James, I guess was he on his way to hell then? I guess is he in hell right now? No. See, what you have here is you have a different dispensation. Who is the book of James written to? James chapter 1, verse number 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord, Je or and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes, which are scattered abroad, greeting. Uh, the book of James is written to the twelve tribes, which are Jews, not Christians. But well, I guess in McMurtry's logic, I guess the, I guess James, I guess he was, I guess he's in hell right now. I guess you know, because he preached another gospel. He was a curse then, I guess. Nutty you know, nonsense. That's what Paul is teaching us here. But this this is a very dangerous teaching. And so what the multiple gospel crowd likes to do is they like to, you know, bring, you know, they, they start throwing all these things at you. Like, show me in the Old Testament where they were saved by the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Show me something in the Old Testament that says death, burial, and resurrection. Well, once again, they just deny clear scripture in the New Testament. And one of their go-to passages that they used, you know, they'll beat in your head, the gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And they always go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And let's go there. It says in verse 1, moreover, no. Watch as he just perverts, it just totally perverts this verse. Watch this. Brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. The dispensationalists teach that the Apostle Paul, he is the one that introduced the gospel of the grace of God. They teach that Peter teached a different gospel than Paul, or that Paul teached a different gospel than Jesus Christ, which is beyond wicked, that teaching. But look at verse 3. It says, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. Okay, so Paul and Jesus teach the same gospel. Okay, let me show you something. Matthew chapter 24, the infamous post-trib verse. Matthew chapter 24, four, verse 13. But he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. Uh-oh, you have to endure to be saved? Uh, sounds like works to me. So, was Jesus a curse then? I guess, is Jesus in hell right now? Actually, he probably is, because according to this new IFB cult, they basically believe that Jesus had to pay for our, our sins in hell. And I, heard, I saw this clip of, of uh, Paul Wittenberg, or the Hollywood movie guy, worked on a lesbian, uh, 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 lesbian sodomite pornography film. He actually said that Jesus is, is in hell continually suffering for our sins. Again, I have the clip on my computer, and if you watch uh, Brad Dillinger's video on Marching to Zion Exposed, Part 2, he shows the clip of Paul Wittenberger saying that Jesus Christ is continually, for eternity, suffering in hell to pay for our sins. So, I guess Jesus Christ is in hell now, according to Tommy McMurtry, because he preached a different gospel. She that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. It's crazy. Who is Matthew 24 written to? Let me show you. Matthew 24, verse 16. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Uh, what are Christians doing in Judea? It's written to the Jews. Verse uh, 20. But pray ye that pray ye that your winter be not be that pre, sorry be yeah, sorry I messed up. I was looking at a different verse at the same time. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Uh, what are Christians doing observing the Sabbath? When Paul lists the New Testament command for a Christian, he does not mention the Sabbath. It's to the Jews, not Christians. So again, you have two different dispensations. Matthew 24 is dispensationally in the time of Jacob's trouble. You know, how does that line up with Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 13? It says, you know, in whom also you whom, whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, whom also after that ye believed, you are sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Uh, but then you have to endure to the end to be saved. That mean, then it basically gets then you're not sealed with the Holy Spirit. Then you have to endure. Um, no, it's two different dispensations. Jesus was not preaching another gospel. He's preaching to the Jews, telling them about, about the time of Jacob's trouble. What's, he's warning them about the time of Jacob's trouble. Received how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Say, there it is. The gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Show me that in the Old Testament. 
Well, the thing is, Paul just said in there that he died according to the scriptures. He was buried and rose again according to the scriptures. He's saying the death, burial, and resurrection was done according to the scriptures, a reference to the Old Testament. So how <laughs> Wow. So death, burial, and resurrection according to the scriptures. Okay, where was the death, burial, and resurrection mentioned in the Old Testament? Uh, the death, burial, and resurrection is mentioned in, in uh, Mark, I think it's uh, Mark, Luke, and John, which is, here, okay, here's what we'll do. These people will say, okay, well, Mark, Luke, and John are so technically in the Old Testament. Okay, but it's revealing parts of the New, of the New Testament. Uh, where in any of the Old Testament books did they preach death, burial, and resurrection? Jesus Christ did not come to the book of Matthew. So where did Moses, where did Abraham, where did, you know, um, what, what are some of the other guys? Uh, I can't remember. Ezra, you know, where does Nehemiah, where does Job, where did any of those guys preach the death, burial, and resurrection? It's not even mentioned until the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Nutty nonsense. But he'll say, according to the scriptures, which includes the Old Testament. Huh? Okay, let me show you something. Let me go to the word searcher. Search up the Old Testament. Let me type in the word Jesus. Uh-oh. Zero verses found. Jesus was not mentioned in the Old Testament by name. I mean, there are there are prophecies. Don't get, I mean, don't get me wrong. There are prophecies here and there, like in the book of Isaiah. Uh, there's a prophecy about in Isaiah 9, 6. There's a prophecy about Jesus, but he's not mentioned by name. There's, they weren't preaching the death and resurrection in the in the um, Old Testament. The death, burial, and resurrection is mentioned in the Old Testament, but they weren't preaching it for salvation in the Old Testament. That's the difference. Because Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are dispensationally still in the Old Testament because the uh, New Testament did not begin till the death of Jesus Christ, till after the death of Jesus Christ. That's when the New Testament begins. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are still doctrinally under the Old Testament. But it's just nutty nonsense. It's just crazy. But... Here are some scriptures proving that there was a works, uh, an element of works in the Old Testament. Psalms chapter 51, verse number 11. Because they'll say, there's been, is one saved, always saved, eternal security in the Old Testament. Okay. Psalm 51, verse 11. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Uh, take not thy Holy Spirit from me? Where's eternal security? I thought Ephesians 1, 13 says you're sealed with the Holy Spirit. You see, it's a different dispensation. It's under the Old Testament. There was no eternal security. You had there was an element of works that were involved. Uh, Ezekiel chapter where is it? Ezekiel chapter three, verse number twenty. Here's a verse that kind of makes a problem for these uh, uh, heretics in the new IFB. Ezekiel three twenty. Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die because thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin. And his righteousness, which he hath done, shall not be remembered. Sorry, but his blood of water required thine hand. His righteousness, which he hath done, uh, that's works. And notice this, a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness. You know, talks about he shall die in his sin, meaning he lost his salvation and he goes to hell. A righteous man. How does that line, how does that line up with, with what Paul wrote? It's nutty nonsense. Um, Ezekiel 33. Here's another one that makes a problem for these non-dispensationalists. Ezekiel chapter 30, oh, I want 23, sorry. Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 8 and 9. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die, if thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Verse 9. Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked from, of his wicked way, to turn from it, and he do not turn from his wicked way, or from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. So wait a second, you have to turn from your wicked way, or you'll die in your iniquity and go to hell? And thou hast delivered thy soul, so your soul is delivered because you're warning the wicked? Uh, that works. You know, but not according to Tom and McMurtry. It's been salvation. It's always been the same throughout the entire Bible. Stupid, nutty nonsense. Non-dispensationalism is a stupid, satanic heresy. So... Don't be deceived by this whole new IFB cult. Uh, Non-dispensationalism, it's, it's wicked. So anyway, God bless you. Goodbye.